Aircraft carriers, those majestic floating air bases, hold a unique position of importance within the United States government. In fact, there is a federal law that mandates a minimum number of operational carriers for the U.S. Navy, 11 to be exact. But have you ever wondered why there is such an emphasis on aircraft carriers over other types of warships? And how did they arrive at the number 11? Let's explore the fascinating story behind the significance of aircraft carriers and their role in the United States military strategy. Being the most powerful is not necessarily synonymous with being powerful enough. The United States is often hailed as having the largest and most potent Navy in the world, but simply claiming the top spot does not guarantee adequacy. Just as an m and champion would be overwhelmed facing multiple opponents simultaneously, even the most formidable military force may struggle against the combined strength of multiple nations. So, how much power is enough? The United States military doctrine centers around power projection, a nation's ability to deploy and sustain forces beyond its own borders. To fulfill this objective, the U.S. maintains approximately 754 military bases across 80 nations worldwide. However, when permanent basing is limited, the primary tool for power projection becomes the Navy. This is precisely why there is such an extraordinary emphasis on aircraft carriers. When is the nearest aircraft carrier? This is said to be the first question asked by U.S. presidents during times of crisis. But in reality, it is the air wing assigned to the aircraft carrier that garners their attention. The carrier itself is merely a floating platform, while the true power projection lies in the airplanes of the carrier air wing. These aircraft had the capability to project tactical air power over long distances, including airborne early warning, air interdiction, and anti-surface warfare. The aircraft carriers enabled the operation of these formidable air wings. So, how did the U.S. government arrive at the number 11? The 11 supercarriers in the U.S. Navy surpassed the combined total of all other nations' aircraft carriers. Moreover, all American aircraft carriers are nuclear-powered, granting them unlimited range. However, it is important to note that not all 11 supercarriers are deployable simultaneously. Typically, around one-third are undergoing maintenance, one-third are engaged in training and preparation, and one-third are on deployment. While additional carriers could be rushed into service if needed, the number of deployable supercarriers falls far short of the nominal 11. In practice, two to three supercarriers are deployed at any given time, which has proven sufficient for the U.S. military's strategic requirements. The concept of being able to fight and win two major wars simultaneously has roots in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. During this period of territorial expansion, the United States acquired new territories and faced the need for a Navy presence in both the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. The completion of the Panama Canal in 1914 facilitated the movement of ships between the two oceans, enabling the U.S. Navy to project power in both regions without doubling its fleet size. The need for the U.S. military to address the possibility of confronting two simultaneous threats emerged in the 1930s. With the rise of regional powers to the West and the decline of the Royal Navy as a protective force, defense planners recognized the importance of being prepared for potential conflicts with Germany in the East and Japan in the West. This led to the Vincent Walsh Act of 1940, also known as the Two Ocean Navy Act. The act authorized significant funding to expand the U.S. Navy fleet by 70% and placed particular emphasis on aircraft and aircraft carriers. The construction of 18 aircraft carriers and the expansion of air and naval facilities across the Pacific were key outcomes of this act. While the U.S. Navy has set a goal of reaching 355 ships by 2034, there are conservative public policy organizations, such as the Heritage Foundation, that advocate for a larger military force. Their proposals include not only a 400-ship Navy, but also an increase in the number of aircraft carriers to 13, or rather, 12 plus 1. The rationale behind this argument is to ensure that one aircraft carrier is available in each of the three major regions of the world, Atlantic, Pacific, and Mediterranean slash Middle East, while maintaining additional carriers for deployment rotations. 
The objective is to preserve the health and effectiveness of the ships, crews, and aircraft on board by avoiding prolonged deployment times that might prove operationally unrealistic. However, it is crucial to consider the significant costs associated with maintaining and expanding a larger military force. The U.S. military budget as a percentage of the GDP has been declining over the past few decades, making it challenging to support such growth. Additionally, emerging threats in the realm of cyber warfare could potentially disrupt traditional military strategies. Cyber attacks targeting communication systems or military command and control infrastructure could have severe consequences for national security. The story of aircraft carriers and their central role in U.S. military strategy is an ever-evolving narrative. While the concept of fighting and winning two major wars simultaneously remains a cornerstone of U.S. military planning, adaptation to new challenges and emerging threats is essential. As we look to the future, the question of how to maintain a strong and effective military force will continue to shape national security discussions. The U.S. Navy's aircraft carriers stand as symbols of power projection and the ability to safeguard national interests across the globe.